A few weeks ago, I posted the video Evolution versus Creation. A scientific answer a nine year old could understand. In that video, while operating from an unbiased base, we scientifically examined nature to determine if there were evidence to irrefutably confirm whether life evolved or was created. Comprised of a clearly explained progression of rational, logical steps. From what we discovered, it looked as if there were exceptions to the evolutionary model, and where there are exceptions, there has to be an alternative. That alternative we discovered could only be described as intelligent design, i.e. there being huge jumps in the formation of life, comprising of what could only be described as many non-beneficial steps simultaneously appearing, rather than the gradual progression of solitary individual steps as dictated by evolutive theory. However, we began to receive comments from viewers that appeared very unhappy with our conclusions. This video has been produced to address the concerns they have raised. Due to time constraints and the fact other related material will be covered in forthcoming presentations, those concerns were not addressed in the main video. But, as they were raised, we will cover them now to support the fluidity of learning. These are our findings. A gentleman who named his YouTube presence as Caribbean Man commented, saying, The Dover trial delved into this matter in great detail. The creationists' claims, which include one you mentioned in this video, were shown by the experts to be incorrect. Time and again, creationist literature and videos meant to point out the flaws of evolution only wind up revealing that creationist arguments against evolution are rooted in a flawed understanding of the subject, seasoned with a heavy dose of logical fallacies. My only doubts about them centre on whether the creationist presenter or publisher is deliberately strawmanning evolution, or is genuinely ignorant and lacking in understanding. Evolution is settled science for any honest, unbiased, by religious interests, observer, examining the multiple lines of evidence supporting it. The judge in the Dover trial was compelled by the evidence of the experts to rule in favour of settled science. This despite being a Christian. Obviously, it is impossible to understand the merits of the points he has made without investigating the Dover trial itself. We did, and here are our observations, fueled by a thirst for knowledge without bias to any side. The Dover trial is a legal dispute known as Kitz Miller et al. v. Dover. It was settled on December the 20th, 2005, where the US District Court Judge John E. Jones III ordered the Dover Area School Board to terminate its science curriculum policy, which stated, quote, Students will be made aware of gaps, stroke problems in Darwin's theory and other theories of evolution, including, but not limited to, intelligent design. End quote. Under the original policy implemented by the board, teachers were required to teach that intelligent design is an explanation of the origin of life that differs from Darwin's view. The reference book of Pandas and People is available for students to see if they would like to explore this view in an effort to gain an understanding of what intelligent design actually involves. As is true with any theory, students are encouraged to keep an open mind. End quote. The judge, in his 139-page ruling, wrote, it was, quote, abundantly clear that the board's intelligent design policy violates the Establishment Clause. Furthermore, Judge Jones ruled that intelligent design cannot uncouple itself from its creationist and thus religious antecedents. End quote. In reference to whether intelligent design is science, Judge Joan wrote, intelligent design, quote, is not science and cannot be adjudged a valid, accepted scientific theory as, 
And here's the important part. It has failed to publish in peer-reviewed journals, engage in research and testing, and gain acceptance in the scientific community. What this amounts to is the judge ruling against it because of two points. One, it could be interpreted as breaching the First Amendment of the US Constitution. Not because it is incorrect, but because it could be perceived as the school board, a representative of the US government, promoting the idea of one religious belief above that of another, by encasing it within a science. It is also worth noting that during the Warren Court era of the 1960s, there was a focused drive for the state to distance itself from religion, making a sharp U-turn on its understanding of the First Amendment from the date it was drafted. This makes this part of the court's decision not one based on science, but one based on an incorrect interpretation of the First Amendment. I am certain the Founding Fathers would not have intended their law to obstruct the pursuit of science and progress. In fact, if I were a betting man, and believe me I am not, I'd wager the opposite. The second reason given by Judge Jones for why he ruled against intelligent design was the claim it could not be recognised as a scientific theory because of it lacking 1. published papers in peer-reviewed journals, 2. official research and testing which has prevented it gaining 3. acceptance in the scientific community. To the layperson, this sounds like a credible answer. However, when you have more understanding, it becomes clear that this argument carries no weight at all because of what you will discover from the following. In the summer of 2008, I met a professional PhD level paleontologist who also had multiple degrees in complementary subjects. He asked me a very interesting question. He asked, how do paleontologists receive their funding? Since my training was in international business, I would fund laboratories to research into areas that supported my own commercial interests, and I could not answer him because I couldn't identify any practical income generating application for the information paleontology would reveal. But he told me, grants and donations. He went on to explain, due to the nature of the field, commercial organisations were seldom interested in funding his work. Therefore, his entire sector was financed by long-term established academic institutions. He'd make a presentation to universities and publishers of certain academic works who would finance the study if they were interested in having those answers. He also said that, despite the unbiased public face of academia, who are promoted as pioneers of truth, his first-hand experience clearly proved that those sponsors all had their own agendas. Academia were heavily in favour of funding projects that promised to advance the promoted agendas of the day, as even those institutions were answerable to the sponsors. This caused them to proactively block research into areas that did not, regardless of the supporting evidence, science and rationale involved. This prevented these areas from being officially researched and therefore being recognised in the scientific community. To get funding, he said he had to be extremely selective in the studies he proposed, ensuring they supported and maintained status quo. He told me from networking with other pioneers in the institutions, this was a reality common to all sciences, which resulted in the sciences being biased and not giving a rounded understanding of many subjects. He also identified evolution to be one of those areas which is heavily defended. At the time, this was only of passing academic interest to me. As one who approached things as an atheistic, military-grade critical operations person with an understanding of how to influence the strength of a nation via manipulation of its balance of payments, this information had no practical value to me. I noted it as only part of my general knowledge of the larger world beyond my field, and moved on. However, it is of direct relevance here. The facts are, most people are not professionally trained in this area of study. 
in order to protect their careers, most of those who are will selectively perform research into areas that support the promoted narrative. Those who attempt to do otherwise bring their careers and the purpose of their years of study to an abrupt end. As a result of this, most of the supported and promoted texts on the subject of the origin of life will only support evolution. Studies into the possibility of intelligent design will only be done as incidental projects to invalidate this area of reasoning, causing students and other parties with just a common interest in the subject, such as honest truth seekers like Caribbean Man, to be misled from the decisions of academic hierarchy, and others such as Judge Jones III, who by virtue of his profession had to rely on statements presented by the biased academia. However, a very interesting question is raised. Why are the academic institutions effectively stifling research into the area of intelligent design? These actions originate from a desire to maintain a position they need in order to support their own careers or the desire to be accepted by their peers. Beliefs based on this are akin to the weak yielding to a playground bully or the crowd following the man who shouts the loudest and not the man who is right. This specifically relates to comments like those left by Rick Martin who left an interesting remark regarding paychecks, except the paychecks here are being received by academia, as they refuse to fund studies that would publicly expose the flaws that would depose evolution. This is not accidental. However, as I hope this video will accomplish, accrediting evolution as the origin of life is incorrect, and it has been presented as such for alternative reasons. Another gentleman who identified himself on YouTube as Andrew Levick left some other interesting comments regarding the idea that the bacterial flagella is a debunked example of irreducible complexity, claiming its formation has resulted from the repurposing of other proteins. However, if one has an understanding of cause and effect rationale, the repurposing of other proteins is evolution. Therefore, that argument is illogical. Think. If it is vastly improbable for an electric motor to reform itself from a mishmash of random geological spare parts, then how much more so is it unlikely that a far more complex organism should exist by the same path of development? Once again, the facts support what another contributor named Loop said, namely, one needs something to be created before descent with modification, what is commonly thought of as evolution, can exist. Please note, when I say the above, I make no slur on valued contributors like Caribbean Man, Rick Martin and Andrew Levick, or even judges like Judge Jones III. Their positions are entirely rational, if you place absolute faith in the efforts of others, such as those responsible for shaping the academic system. However, as a critical operations person, that is, one responsible for performing activities that cannot fail, Training and experience have taught me to place absolute trust in no one, and to always rely on your own powers of deduction. Obviously, to do this effectively will require learning as much as necessary about any relating area, but that is not an issue. A lawyer practices what they read from law books. An accountant practices what they've learned from accountancy texts. A medical nurse or doctor, medical texts. A London taxi driver, the knowledge, which is a specialised understanding of the London road network, and so on. Always remember, everything is easy. If anyone else can understand anything, so can you, with enough effort and time being committed to learn. Given enough topic-related fuel, you can develop a detailed understanding of anything you wish to. So. Please subscribe to this channel. Make this part of your incidental education. Combine this with the knowledge of others and your own observations regarding the world around you. Become a contributor to our discovery by adding your observations and comments below. It is only by our sharing our acquired wisdom that we can grow to be the best that our design can be and 
if my suspicions are correct, that potential is far beyond anything most of us would consider possible. Thank you.